when the retinas of mammals, like us, of humans, get injured, uh, they don't naturally fix themselves. And when the neurons die, there isn't a source of new stem cells within the eye that'll fix them naturally in people. But there are these cells in other animals. The retina, this light sensing part of the eye, can fix itself in things like frogs and salamanders and uh, fish and even birds to some extent. Um, when it undergoes this repair process in, in fish and in birds, it uses a, a particular type of cell called a glial cell. And a glial cell normally acts as kind of like a supportive cell for the neurons. And when the neurons die um, in these, these non-mammal vertebrates, in vertebrates like, um, in animals like frogs and fish, the glia undergo a reaction to become more like a stem cell. And when they become more like a stem cell, then they can start making new neurons again. We used a lot of sources of information to try and understand how regeneration could be stimulated. And one of those sources was the zebrafish, a particular gene that uh, acts, it's called a transcription factor. Um, this gene can act to turn on the regeneration process in the fish. And if this gene doesn't get turned on itself, then it won't, then the fish retina won't regenerate. So what we decided to do was to see if putting this gene into the mouse glial cell in the retina would actually stimulate it to do what the fish did and regenerate its retina just like the fish. We came up with a, a way to overexpress this gene to make, turn this gene on in the mouse. What this gene does is it's, it's like flipping switches and um, there's a number of other genes that has to, have to get turned on for regeneration to occur. But this gene is in a position like a master regulator, we would call it, where it's, it's the one throwing the switches. So when we turn on this master regulator, then this thing throws all the switches and turns on the regeneration of new neurons in the retina. The only problem was, in fish, all those switches are ready to go and can be turned on as soon as, as, soon as the master regulator gets turned on. But in mice, those switches are all stuck. What we found in this paper was we found that if we kind of oil those switches, you could say, with, um, with, with something called an epigenetic regulator, along with putting in the master regulator, then the switches can be switched again. And so it really required those two steps of putting, on the master, putting in the master regulator in the glial cells in mice, and then also kind of um, oiling those switches a little bit to allow them to more easily switch. And with those two things together, after injury in the mouse, now the glial cells behave like they do in the fish and start to make neurons again and start to repair the retina. Now, no one had ever actually been able to accomplish this feat before, I think in part because it required these two factors together. But what was very interesting is when the neurons started to form, um, they started to reconnect into the circuitry. And we find that when we can stimulate the process in mice, it, it seems that they do the same thing as the fish and wire in correctly. So while we thought we might have to also solve the problem of getting the wiring right, it turns out once you make the neurons, they know what to do and they make the correct wiring. So the next steps would include um, trying to come up with strategies to direct these glial cells into specific types of neurons that are injured in particular diseases. And so I think we still have our work cut out for us in order to direct these glial cells into not just um, neurons of the, of the type that we were able to make in this study, but to make other cell types, other neuron types that are selectively able to fix these other diseases.